So what happens if you have actual values? So if we have something like sign 300, how do we reduce this using the reduction formula? Now the first thing you always do is to look at which quadrant does it fall under. Now we understand that 300 falls between 270 and 360. So that means that it's in the fourth quadrant. So the first step is to determine the quadrant it falls under. The next step is to rewrite the value we have into the equation of the fourth quadrant. And the equation of the fourth quadrant is 360 minus theta. We'll rewrite 300 in 360 minus theta, meaning that it's going to look like this. As you can see, we have 360 minus 60, which also gives us this value for 300 that you have over there. Then the final step is to either have it to be a positive or have it to be a negative. Now, since sine is negative in the fourth quadrant, this is just going to be negative sine 60 degrees. And that there would be your final answer. If there's a possibility of simplifying sine 60, you do that, or else you can just leave it like that. Let us try out one more example time 220. Now 220 falls in the third quadrant because it falls between 180 and 270. The next thing we write is we write 220 into the equation of the third quadrant. And now we give it a sign since tan is positive in the third quadrant, this will just be written as tan 40. And that's it. So this is the concept of reduction. Whenever you want to reduce anything, the first step would be to determine which quadrant it is. The second step is to rewrite the value into the equation of the quadrant. And the third step is to assign a sign, right? Is it going to be negative? Is it going to be positive? Then we just bring it back to the first quadrant. That's exactly how you use reduction formula. Now that you have a better understanding of how reduction formula works, let us try out an example where you have to use reduction formula to simplify your question. It says cos 240 times sine 315 times time 120 over sine 150 times 330 cos 225. Now, for the first one we have over here, we understand that 240 is in the third quadrant. And the equation of the third quadrant is 180 plus x. So we are going to rewrite this in that format. This one here, we have 315 is in the fourth quadrant. We will write 315 as the equation of the fourth quadrant. We have this here, which is tan 120. We will write tan 120 in the equation of the second quadrant because 120 is in the second quadrant. Then we have 150 here is in the second quadrant also. We will write 150 in the equation of the second quadrant. And 330 is in the fourth quadrant. We will write that in the equation of the fourth quadrant. Finally, 225 is in the third quadrant and we write cos 225 in the third quadrant. So now all we'll just need to do is bring everything back into the first quadrant and assign sign depending on if in that quadrant your sign, your cos, your tan is positive or is it negative. So since this is in the third quadrant, we understand that in the third quadrant cos is negative. So we write it as sign is negative in the fourth quadrant so is tan negative in the second quadrant sign is positive in the second quadrant tan is negative in the fourth quadrant and cos is also negative in the third quadrant in one of our previous videos, we talked about special angles. Now, we are trying to simplify this, and usually in questions like this, you normally say simplify this without the use of a calculator. You will notice a trend in this question that every single one of this are special angles. So, the next thing I'm just going to do is change every single thing to the equivalent value of your special angle.
So from here, we have a negative here because it is negative times negative times negative. It will give you a negative value. And from here, this is positive times negative times negative, which will give you a positive value. That's why we see no sign here. Now, all we just need to do over here is cross cancel, right? We actually see some things are equal. In the numerator, we see there's half and there's also half there. So that can cancel out. And we also see this root 2 over 2 and this is root 2 over 2. That will cancel out. So all you'll be left with is negative root 3 over 1 over root 3. I could rewrite that as negative root 3 divided by 1 over root 3. Which is the same thing as writing negative root 3 times root 3, which is equals to negative 3. And that there will be your final answer. So this is exactly how you can use reduction formula to simplify values that has number in it.